Reserve, Louisiana. 40 minutes up the Mississippi River from the city of New Orleans. It's one of dozens of towns along an industrial corridor known around here as Cancer Alley. For decades, the region has been inundated with toxic pollution from chemical plants along the riverbank. But no place along this stretch, or indeed anywhere in America, is more at risk of cancer due to air pollution than here in Reserve. We're here to meet a community of residents who are fighting back. The right side of the street, they had both parents, they died with cancer. The lady next to her husband died with cancer. My brother on the opposite side, his wife died with cancer. Uh, the man right here, he just died with cancer. Right here. And my brother right next door, he died with cancer. My brother who lives next door to him, he has cancer right now. Yeah. And they have a, a trailer next to that house, a lady at that died with cancer. So. It's just my street, just the street here. And everybody here has respiratory sickness from the front to the back. And to have that many people in the same area dying, it has to be caused from something. And this is the closest thing that we have right there to plant. How much have you ever thought about leaving? Well, I'm gonna tell you, if I could afford to leave, I would've only left a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But right now, I don't wanna leave. I, feel, I just want it to get better. Not to say shut the plant down, at least make it safe for us to live. Because I know the plant depends on, the world depends on neoprene. The people depends on the jobs. But do we have to die? I mean, it's, I'm sure there's things that they can do. But it's all about the dollar. There are nearly 50 toxic chemicals in the air here. But the most immediate concern for residents in reserve is chloroprene, emitted by the plant next to Mary's home. The factory sits on the land of a former rice plantation where, throughout much of the 19th century, hundreds of enslaved people worked the land for a white landowner. In the 1960s, the plant was built by chemicals giant DuPont. In 2015, it was sold to the Japanese company Denka. It has been emitting chloroprene into the air here for a half century. The compound is used in the production of the synthetic rubber neoprene, and for the past decade, the plant has been the only place in America to produce it. In 2015, the U.S. government's environment agency, the EPA, found that the plant presented the greatest risk of cancer to the surrounding community of any manufacturer in the U.S. Nationally, the average risk of cancer from toxic air is 30 in 1 million. Here, it's 50 times that, or 1,505 in 1 million. My uncle was going to meet a girl at a club. I'm just standing there looking and looking, and the girl walk in the door, and I say, man, dark skin and pretty hair? I said, that's my type of girl right there, and not knowing I was going to marry her. I told her I was from Reserve. You know, she never wanted to make a home here because of the, she feared of getting cancer. Make a long story short, probably 95, she ended up with cancer, and she died in 2012. She knew she got it from being around it. She determined that. Louisiana's own environment department has the authority to regulate the plan. But instead, it entered into a voluntary agreement with Denka to cut emissions in 2017. Significantly, that agreement does not enforce the EPA's suggested guideline that only 0.2 micrograms of chloroprene per cubic meter is safe to breathe. Despite falling in recent years, emissions from the plant are routinely over the EPA limit. Believe me, if we felt that there was an imminent threat, we would be taking the, the appropriate measures to deal with that threat. We're going to continue to gather data, and we're going to get through this, I think, uh, uh, together, and hopefully a resolution that, that everybody has a level of comfort uh, that they're being protected. Dissatisfied with the state's lax approach, residents like Robert Taylor have been campaigning to cut emissions in the community. Vast majority of the people who are suffering from this are black folk, poor folk, working class people at best, like myself. The only conclusion we can come to is that the government has abandoned us, that they have written us off. If we walked over to Denka and asked them about this, what they would probably say is, you know, look, we spent $30 million on this thermal oxidizer. We're going to destroy 85 to 90 percent of the chloroprene coming out of our stacks. Um, you know, what is your response to 
to them making that investment and, and their claims that, that this is their attempt to be a good neighbor? Oh, are they looking for gratitude from us? They, they have been harming us. They admitted that they could do less, that they could have done less for decades. They went ahead and poisoned us because it was profitable for them to do. It's insulting to, to people's intelligence to say that, well, look at the jobs we provide. Look what good we do for the economy. They don't do any good. They have ruined the economy for us. I worked all my life to build my home next door to my neighbor who did the same thing. And because of DuPont, our houses are valued at only 40% of what it normally would. How is that helping this community? When are the people gonna st stop listening to foolishness? People here just need to stand up, open their eyes, and demand justice, demand the right thing be done by our supposed leaders. Hello? Yeah, I'm headed to the church right now. Can you meet me there? I'm already here. Oh, okay. Well, I'll see you in a minute then. Local politicians have mostly ignored and minimized residents' concerns. But little by little, their movement is growing, like here at the Chapatulas Chapel, which has become a hub for the campaign. People are dying these horrible deaths, suffering these maladies. It's unconscionable. This is really serious. They never once said, yeah, of course, there's a simple solution. It is Stop that monstrosity from killing us. <laughs> Over the next year, The Garden will be covering stories from Reserve and other parts of Cancer Alley to hear from residents who feel like they've been forgotten and left behind. We'll be following their fight against industry and against government inaction. Their fight to breathe clean air in the town they call home.